Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be Marco's pregnancy and labour birth story. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a longer one because I had a lot of issues with Marco, hence why if you've been watching my pregnancy updates, which I will link all below, then I am seeing consultants and midwives etc a lot more frequently just because they want to keep an eye on me and <laughs> make sure that what happened with Marco doesn't happen again. So, fell pregnant with Marco, um, again pretty quickly when Nico was about five or six months old and I was ridiculously sick. I was um, puking every day, all day, up until about 18 weeks um, and it was really, really bad. I couldn't keep anything down, food, water, my vitamins, anything like that. It was just awful and I just felt completely drained um, just all the time really and I don't know whether that had an effect on the rest of my pregnancy or what I'm about to tell you with Marco. I also fell pregnant on the pill as well I thought I would mention because I never know whether that has or had an effect on Marco, I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, obviously it was an unexpected pregnancy, um, but obviously very, very happy. He's here now and he's um, healthy and he's safe. So yeah, that's all that matters. Um, and I couldn't imagine life without him now. At our 12 weeks ago and everything was fine, measurements, um, bloods, everything came back absolutely normal. It's weird because before our 20 week scan, I kept saying to Dan, something's not right. I don't feel right. Um, Dan and my husband, Dan, he was just sort of saying, oh, you know, you're just worrying too much. I think during my first pregnancy I never worried about anything, it's weird, but I feel like the more pregnancies I've had, I've worried more, I think because maybe I'm more aware of what can happen, or what can go wrong, or, um, you're, I think you're just more uh, knowledgeable about things during pregnancy, so it does make you worry more, and it's weird, I just had that instinct that something wasn't quite right, I couldn't put my finger on what it was, um, Obviously we'd heard the heartbeat and stuff previously and everything was fine. So yeah, I'd always said that something wasn't right and I don't know if it was down to the sickness or I'm not sure, but I just knew in myself that something wasn't right. So we went to our 20 week scan and everything was fine. Um, up until the end, I, well, I noticed the sonographer sort of going around his bottom half a lot more. Um, and I just sort of looked at her and I could sort of tell by her face and I don't know whether that was just me being paranoid or me feeling that something wasn't right anyway. Um, I just sort of had a feeling and so I just sort of said to her, is everything okay? And she said, uh, yes, well obviously we wanted to find out. So she told us we were having another boy, which was just brilliant. So I was very, very excited about that. Um, and then she dropped to the bombshell that Marco was gonna be born with talipes and I had heard of it before but I hadn't sort of looked into it obviously I had no need to so I just knew that there was something wrong with the with his feet that's all I knew I didn't know what it was or how it happened or what <laughs> what else could have been wrong with him so yeah that was a bit tough to take she said I'm just going to get you to wait in the parent room and I'll get somebody to come and see you. Um, I think like the consultant, the main sonographer, lady person, um, just to sort of go over and double check that what she saw in the scan was correct. So we waited in this room for a little while and she said, please, while you're waiting here, don't Google anything. So obviously the first thing I did was googled what is talipes and looking back now I wish I never done it because um, it came up with the most horrific images um, videos and just general sort of facts that I wish I never read because from then on uh, yeah it was just scary really so um Sorry, I feel like this video is going <laughs> to open up a whole lot of emotions, so um, bear with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously seeing the baby was great, knowing everything um, sort of health-wise, heart, 
brain, I guess, it uh, was fine. Um, just his feet. Um, but then the consultant came in and sort of scanned us over again just to confirm that it was talipes and she said straight away, yeah, that that baby is going to be born with talipes. After we found out Marco had talipes, we were offered a amniocentesis, which if you don't know, is a needle into the uh, into your stomach. It goes into the amniotic fluid and they draw the fluid out and it goes for testing because babies born with um, talipes, clubfoot, are can be born with issues, um, learning difficulties, spina bifida, that sort of thing. And obviously that is, you know, quite extreme to deal with, I think. You know, you want your babies to just be perfect and healthy and I knew this baby wasn't going to be that healthy. So it was a bit tough to sort of make that decision. Do we go for the amnio and have a slight chance of miscarriage or do we just not find out and just deal with it as it comes? So me and my husband had that conversation and we just said, well, it's our baby, it's our son. It makes no difference to us whether, you know, he's got spina bifida or whatever. You know, our minds ran away with us to be fair. So obviously we declined the amnio because it made no difference to us whether or not he was going to be born with anything else other than talipes. Um, and we didn't want to have that slight chance of miscarriage. Yeah, it was just not something that was on the cards for us. I know everybody is completely different and please know that that is just my personal opinion and that is what suited us better as a family. I completely understand why people would want to know. Um, so for me personally, it just wasn't something that was on the cards for us. So she arranged an appointment for us to go to Southampton Hospital where the um, orthopaedic surgeons and stuff are and where they treat talipes. We went, I think I must have been about 24 weeks pregnant and we went there, me and my husband, and we just basically met with our consultant and our surgeon um, and the nurse and we got told basically the whole treatment, what was going to happen, at what stage. So we were very, very aware of the treatment that we would need to go through before he was even here which was great because I felt like I could sort of deal with it a little bit better knowing what we were sort of in for instead of him being born and then people throwing loads of information going right you need to go here you need to go here this is what's going to happen so it was good that we were made aware of the treatment and how they were going to uh, help Marco and the team down in Southampton were just absolutely incredible and then the next major part in the pregnancy, it was really weird because at around 27 weeks I started to leak fluid. So I went to the midwife and she just told me that I was wetting myself. And I knew that I wasn't, like I obviously understood this was my third pregnancy in under three years. I was told that my body would be weak, my bladder would be weak, so it's probably just my body sort of saying I've had enough now. I knew it wasn't wee because I was leaking fluid and then had a full bladder and would go for a wee straight after and I knew the difference, like it didn't feel like wee, didn't smell like wee, um, and it was getting more and more frequent. So I then, after a couple of days of being told that I was wetting myself, I then went back to the midwife, saw a different midwife down at the hospital and she basically got me to lie flat on the bed uh, whilst being monitored for half an hour because she said if it is your waters and you lay flat they uh, make a pool at the bottom so when they um, look inside they'll be able to tell whether it is your waters or not. So um, I did that, was on the monitor for half an hour, laid down and I had the the main woman, doctor, lady come in have a check inside and she said straight away, yes, your waters have broken. You've got a ruptured membrane, uh, you're leaking waters, uh, we need to admit you. <laughs> and obviously, I was 27 weeks, so I, I just automatically assumed that my baby was going to come there and then. So I was just so frightened thinking, this is way too early, like what's going to happen? Panic mode, <laughs> panic mode was like in full force. I called my husband and told him and... 
yeah, it was all a bit of a scary time to be fair. They were really, really good at the hospital and they did sort of keep me um, informed of what they were going to do, what their plan was. I also had a swab as well while she was looking inside just to sort of make sure that there were no infections or anything like that because obviously once your water goes, if you get an infection, it's not the, the best for the baby. So it turns out I had group B strep, which I didn't know. So thank goodness I went in when I did. They found that the group B strep was um, like came back positive. And again, I Googled because the woman told me, please don't, we'll give you all the information that you need. I Googled and again, read the most craziest things and I just thought oh my goodness why me like what have I done to deserve all of this I just I had you know two pretty decent pregnancies and then to have this one was just it just really really different for me and I know probably some of you watching this would think oh gosh that's nothing in comparison to what I've been through but because I'd been through two pretty normal pregnancies and um labors well, I just assumed that you know my third one would be similar but actually it was just completely different and it was just filled with nothing but worry and panic um emo like emotions I was just constantly upset thinking you know my waters had gone early the baby's going to be born with talipes I've got a, an infection that can cause uh, stillborn um you know all sorts it's just it's just an awful position to be in and I think unless you've been in that situation it's hard to um, understand really like the emotional side of it yeah <laughs> gosh here I go again I don't think it helps that I'm pregnant and hormonal and emotional anyway <laughs> sorry um so yeah I had group B strep which again wasn't very good so they admitted me for 48 hours when my waters had gone. They needed me to have steroid injections pretty swiftly. So I had my first steroid injection pretty much as I was admitted to the ward, which was horrendous. Oh, I've never known <laughs> pain like it. Steroid injections, if you've had one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They are horrific. The worst injection that I've ever had. I mean, injections are not nice anyway, but steroid injections oh god it was awful but obviously I knew that what it was for it was to strengthen the baby's lungs um had he come early I knew it needed to be done and then obviously you have to wait then another 12 hours to have the second lot so <laughs> I remember sort of coming to about 12 hours later every time I heard footsteps coming onto the ward I was like oh no they're coming to me please no please no just because I was so scared because I knew what was going to come yeah obviously I had to have the second set of injections and once I'd had that they basically said that we're going to send you home with antibiotics like a 10 day course of antibiotics and um I was going to be monitored twice a week basically up until delivery so obviously because my waters had gone usually they say within 24 hours ideally they like to get the baby out I believe um but because I was so early, they wanted to keep him in as long as possible just to make sure that he, you know, his lungs were developed, he, you know, he was bigger, he was going to be stronger. So every day for me was just a worry. I was told by the midwives and the doctors at the hospital that I need to completely bed rest because any kind of strenuous activity or if I was too motivated, it would start labour. So... I was told to bed rest but how how can I bed rest when I've got two children under the age of two at home I I'd, I'd said that to the woman I was like but I've got two very young children how um how on earth and you know my husband works full-time how on earth am I meant to bed rest <laughs> it's just not possible for me so my family were absolutely incredible my dad my mum my grandparents they all basically came around every single day <laughs> until I gave birth to help out with the boys, to do, you know, hoovering, just to generally help out and make my days work with the kids um, easier and less strenuous for me because obviously I didn't want to go into labour that early because it is scary and it's not ideal when you've got children at home to have a premature baby, you know, being torn between the hospital and home is just not what I wanted. I went in twice a week, um, every week for blood tests, 
uh, temperature, blood pressure, wee samples, uh, CTG monitoring for half an hour to 40 minutes. So yeah, I had to do that twice a week, which was tiring because obviously then having people to look after the boys while I drove to the hospital, which is 40 minutes away, then 40 minutes back again. It was just a really, really stressful and tiring time for me. I was told about the Group B strep, um, what they were planning on doing. Because when they swabbed me, it was positive. They just assumed that it's going to stay positive, like because it can it can be there, but then it can not be there. I can't remember what the real like what the proper word is for it, but it basically lies dormant, I think, in your body, and then once it's um, I don't know, active, maybe it could be the word. I don't know. I'm sure you know what I mean, though. Like it's there, but it's not always active or positive but the time they swabbed me it was so they take it from then that up until labour it will be there obviously then my whole birth plan went out the window I couldn't have a home birth I couldn't have a water birth <laughs> I had to be basically strapped to machines the whole time um and have antibiotics through a drip for the group b strep and um actually I didn't realize how common group b strep is I don't think many people talk about it because it is quite scary. So yeah, I went twice a week for um, also scans as well to check how big the baby is, etc. And um, I remember one Sunday, my husband was supposed to have football and it got cancelled. So I said, why don't we get your mum to come over and watch the boys and we can go to the hospital together, quickly do the appointment and then go and have some lunch. This was when I was 34 weeks. So... We did that, he didn't go to football obviously because it was cancelled, he came to the hospital with me, we had a sitter for the other two, went to the appointment, so they put me on the CTG, did it all the other tests, put me on the CTG and it showed that I was contracting. Now I could feel contractions, I just thought they were Braxton and Hicks because they weren't um, overly painful, they were you know, very much bearable, but because I was already contracting, the woman came in and she said, oh you're having you know regular contractions she could see on the monitor they were so regular and I was like well yeah you know they're not painful it's fine like I can you know deal with it and she said well actually I don't think we're gonna let you go out of hospital because you're actually in like early early labor and I just looked at Dan and I just thought this is typical you know we planned a nice lunch out together and now the baby has decided to come <laughs> so from my water's going at 27 weeks I managed to keep him in until 34 weeks, which, you know, was incredible. But obviously still having a baby at 34 weeks isn't ideal when you've got other children at home. Still classed as premature. Um, so there was no room at our local hospital for me, but there was for baby. Um, and I didn't want that, I wanted to be with him. Um, so they tried the next local one, which was Winchester. There was room for me, but not for baby. And obviously again, I didn't want that. So we actually got transferred to Salisbury District Hospital, which was actually really, really nice. I was really surprised when I got there. It was an amazing hospital. And the neonatal unit was just incredible. I don't think it had been open that long. So we got transferred there and obviously my husband had to drive back home, pick up all the bags and then <laughs> drive back to the hospital. I wasn't in any pain, it was weird, but on the machines it was showing that I was like regularly contracting, but I wasn't in pain. I could feel something was happening and I knew something was happening, but I wasn't, I didn't think that I was that far along. Anyway, my husband came and... I can't remember what time it was, but again, I remember it being very dingy, very dark, and it was just absolutely chucking it down with rain. We we got into this room, actually. It was really nice. It had all multicoloured lights everywhere, and I could change them to, like, flashing or, like, dim them all. Um, it was just a really calming room. It was massive. Uh, my husband was watching Only Fools and Horses on the tablet. Well, I, I was as well, just a sort of past time. And it was about midnight, and I really sort of started to feel the contractions a lot more. So I called for the midwife and said, oh, you know, I think things are happening a lot more. You know, it's bearable, I'm fine. I'll just walk around the room because I was on my ball bouncing. I was walking around the room, like swaying my hips a little bit because that usually helps me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really want to sit down. I was sort of leaning over the bed. I wasn't in pain though. It was weird. Like I knew something was happening, but it wasn't, it wasn't that painful. And it was weird until, it was about half past one in the morning. I really started to feel something was happening. I felt like the baby was right there, like ready to come out. 
So the midwife said, well, let me just check you. So I got on the bed and I was five centimetres. Now it literally took 20 minutes. So from five centimetres at half past one to Marco being born at 1.50, <laughs> It just went so quick and the midwives, they weren't ready, they didn't have their gloves on, they didn't have anything ready. So I literally, I remember having a contraction and pushing and she said, no, you can't push yet, don't push yet. And I was like, he's coming, he's right there. She looked down and there he was on the bed, like he'd just been born onto the bed. So I remember scooping him up and just giving him a quick cuddle because I knew that they had to um, rush him off. So I remember just just staring at his tiny, tiny little petite gorgeous face thinking, oh my god, he's here, is he okay? So I remember squeezing him and um, the midwife said, "We, you know, we need to take him now, we need to, we need to take him down to neonatal and get him sorted, but I just didn't want to let him go and I just, I remember saying, no, no, not yet, not yet, but he needed oxygen and he needed some help basically, he needed some anti antibiotics as well obviously because of my group B strep and stuff, so he... Uh, they whisked him away from me, which was just awful, and um, took him down to neonatal, and I remember just feeling absolutely freezing cold, I felt faint, I didn't feel right at all, um, and I said to the nurse, I don't feel right, I don't feel right, I was fully, like my whole body was just shaking, and um, my husband said I lost all of my colour, um, it was very very scary time because I just thought what on earth is happening to me I don't know if my body went into shock because of everything just happened so quickly um anyway the midwife went and got a doctor because she was obviously very concerned about me and the doctor came in and said where are you hurting and I just pointed to like my tummy my abdomen I'd already delivered the placenta as well by this point they were sort of laying it out on the floor making sure it was all out <laughs> um and I remember just pointing to my tummy saying like this is where it hurts Anyway, this doctor, no word of a lie, basically jumped on my tummy. He was on his tiptoes and he was like pushing down like as hard as he could on my tummy and it was worse than labour. I was in absolute agony. I grabbed the gas in air and I remember wriggling like, get off me, get off me. That, that really, really hurts. And all of a sudden, literally just blood squirted out everywhere probably sounds really really dramatic but i'd had um i had a blood clot and it was absolutely huge uh so yeah thankfully it my body told me that something wasn't right and yeah the doctor just knew exactly what was wrong it was weird the minute the blood clot came out i just felt a million times better yeah, it was very very weird it was just I mean, amazing, incredible how they know what's wrong. Like, the doctor came in straight away and knew exactly what was wrong. And I wouldn't have even known. I wouldn't have even been able to tell him what was wrong with me. He just took one look at me, said, where does it hurt? Sorted it out, and then I was fine. I was obviously um, on the drip still for the antibiotics for the group B strep. And I also um, had to have a blood transfusion because I lost over two litres of blood. So I... Um, was still again strapped up to the machine and they said we'd rather do the blood transfusion before you go down and see the baby. My husband went down to the neonatal unit to see Marco um, took loads of pictures for me and and brought them back up to show me and told me what they were doing. He was obviously on a bit of oxygen just to help with his breathing because his lungs hadn't like fully developed yet. He was also being treated for sepsis which I never really mentioned much because it was yeah really scary so he had obviously like a cannula in and he had his arm in a splint um he had an ng tube down with for it like for his feeding um and <laughs> at this point i didn't even think about his feet because everything else was just sort of rushed and just all came at once that i didn't even i don't know it was weird i just didn't even think about it and then when my husband came up with the pictures and I just said, oh gosh, look at his little feet. Like they were just, they were so teeny and they were just so perfect to me. Like he was just so precious. Yeah, it was a funny old time. Um, I will uh, insert some pictures for you so you can see, um, you know, what he was like when he was born. But obviously if you get a bit emotional, then I'd probably look away because I don't even like looking at the pictures now just because... Um, 
it's just sad to see your little baby like that and uh, obviously looking at him now and seeing how far he's come is just incredible but yeah sometimes to look back at the pictures is hard because it just brings back everything emotionally what happened we ended up spending about two weeks in the neonatal unit i think it was 13 days overall and um, before we were discharged um and it was it was really nice but it was like really really tough because I just felt so torn. I felt like Marco needed me there constantly because he was so vulnerable, he was so tiny, he was so, um, he just needed me. But then I just thought the older two at home needed me just as much because I'm usually home full time. And for me to not be there and to be at the hospital with Marco, they must have just thought, what is going on? Where, you know, where's my mum? Um, that was a really, really tricky time in our life. And if you've had a premature baby, you'll know exactly. And it was weird because Marco was really poorly. Even though he wasn't at a you know really early gestation, he was 34 weeks. But he was still really poorly. And I just thought, like, what have I done to deserve all of this? What did we do as people? You know, I believe we're good people. I think we're you know, we're nice people, we don't deserve to have anything like this, nobody does. And I remember speaking to somebody, one of my friends, and she just said, well you get dealt with what you can handle, and I kind of, yeah, I do, I see that, I mean it was really, really difficult to handle, and we we did have a tough time, I mean thank goodness we've got a, a strong enough marriage to get through something like that, because it was really tough. You know, luckily the boys were great, they enjoyed spending time with their grandparents, and you know, again, the family were just amazing, stepping up and watching the boys when I needed to go and see Marco, and obviously Dan had to go back to work at some point, so I think what he did was he took a week off while I was in the hospital, went back to work for a week, and then when we came home, he then took another week off, because obviously he wanted to spend time with us all as a family. So that time when Dan was at work, I had to be at home with the boys and then get people to come and watch them while I could go and see Marco. So I did a lot of traveling back and forth. It was exhausting, like emotionally, mentally, physically. I just felt like I wanted to split myself in three and just have a little bit for Nico, have a little bit for Lorenzo, <laughs> have a little bit for Marco. It just wasn't it wasn't possible. Um, I feel like I did a good job in the end, like looking back now, and I just think, how on earth did we get through that? That was really, that was such a crazy, crazy time for us. And, you know, he's 10 months old now, and looking at his feet, you'd never even know. You know, he, he is smaller than, a, than an average 10 month old. So anyway, Marco, yeah, he was born. He was born on the 17th of October. He weighed four pounds, 14 and a half ounces, and he was born at 150 in the morning and he was just a darling precious little boy like he was just he's oh he's so dainty and he's just so precious i know i keep saying it and obviously i am biased because he's my son but salisbury district hospital were absolutely incredible and they got me through the journey and i met some incredible mums in the NICU as well. I still speak to them now, obviously, and their babies are doing incredible. Some of the mums there are just so inspirational. You know, babies, some of their babies were born really early, 26 weeks even, and I just think, gosh, how, how do you even cope with that? Obviously, we had to wait a little bit before we started treatment with his feet. So he was born at 34 weeks, and he actually started treatment with his feet a week before his due date. So he started treatment at 39 weeks gestation, um, but he was four, five, six, seven, five weeks old. So I've done a video on this anyway, which I will link below. I'm not going to explain it in this one because this is just about pregnancy and labour, but I will link his Talapi story um, below. So if you are interested in hearing all about that, then make sure you go and check that video out as well because... Um, I know it might not be of interest to all of you, but some of you out there who are watching may be in the same situation or be pregnant with a baby with talipes. So that was pretty much it. And I'm quite proud of myself that I didn't get <laughs> overly emotional. So thank you so much for sitting through this awfully long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to uh, Marco's story, his pregnancy and his labor. I am hoping obviously this labour and pregnancy is going to run a lot smoother than Marco's but I guess because we've been through a bit of a traumatic time already 
we are probably a little bit more prepared to go through that this time round. I mean, fingers crossed and I'm hoping and praying every day that nothing like that happens again and that Marco was just a little one-off. But who knows, I'm getting checked more regularly this time round. Um, they've got a very close eye on me and obviously I'm trying to look after myself as much as I can with three kids. So yes, please, if you haven't already, then subscribe and I would love for you to follow me on Instagram. I'll put the links and everything that you need to know down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.